want to say welcome <laughs> mr marcus hatton how you doing bro amazing man thank right, you for cool, having man. me cool 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 serious thing all right uh we want to kick start things right first question i have is um why do you believe basketball culture was so big in baltimore in the 90s and the 2000s the love the passion um just the genuine care of like being able to enjoy something that you can be so creative in and you know you you saw it throughout a number of players and then you know you just the competitiveness <clears throat> just the competitiveness that kicks in you just it just looks so fun you know and i think people like it it, it became a culture and you know you got once you do the history you were able to go back decades after decades and then like you see how important it was to our city because i'm from north jersey right mm -hmm. and i was shocked when i got down to baltimore to see how dudes was hooping mm -hmm. because we play you know you play an au team but to be down there and see the culture you know even from the what was the, the phone positive yeah, i was wearing yeah, yeah 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 um at that time like you said like you know baltimore is so embedded with like great basketball players a lot of the times they get caught up into the lifestyle um, of the city and that that becomes secondary if you're not focused you know you get into hustling or you get into working or you got to be the man of the house before it's your time and you really don't get to fulfill your dream or live out your dream and the ones that do you know I think the people who wanted that dream live through them so it's like you know it's important that you know that legacy has been carried on through generations how hard is it when you're from a neighborhood like that when you hoop to keep a distance from people to avoid getting in trouble while at the same time interacting with them? For me, it was easy. Like, and, that, and that's one thing I loved about my neighborhood. Like, trying to indulge into something that you wasn't, those guys didn't allow it. You know, my older guys, my OGs, my big brothers, what we call, you know, like, they didn't allow you to indulge into things that you they knew wasn't you. Like, so, like, that, that family like feel and, and brotherhood that we had for me made it that much special and you brought up a great point because um i had the same experience but it's like we had old heads mm -hmm. but i think right now it's not a lot of old heads guiding people in the right direction i agree um it's just it, but the thing is with basketball it's not an overnight thing you know even you know back then and even now like you know i think a lot of the people get caught up in wanting the overnight thing so when you see that lifestyle being in the streets, like it's like you feel like it's overnight because you can go make five, ten thousand a day. When you playing basketball, that don't happen until the end game. So I think, you know, they're like, man, I ain't got time to play this basketball. I, well, I play it for a hobby. I ain't really thinking about when I can go out here and make five or ten thousand a day. By the time he gets to college or wherever you think he's going, I'll be a millionaire. So it's easy to get caught up into that lifestyle when, like, you know, push basketball to the uh, the back end. Um, and from what I understand, your pops worked with a lot of legends in Baltimore? Yes. Can you yes. tell me some of the people you worked with? Um, my father, Mojo, we call him, Robert Hatton, you know, God rest his soul, right? may he rest in peace. Um, first, before, you know, he taught the legends, he was a legend himself. Like, he was a great basketball player. Um, had an opportunity to play in the um, NBA, so oh, he played in the league. He didn't play. He had an opportunity. Oh, opportunity! So right, right. let, let me I'm gonna elaborate on it. So you know he had a workout for the, a tryout for the Baltimore Bullets at the time. Yeah. Um, they saw him um, play and they invited him out there. He got caught up into the lifestyle. Didn't they actually make the tryout. Get, you know he missed the tryout. Um, but you know then he just went full fledged into being in the community, trying to give kids um, an outlet. Um, so he worked with the legends, like legends, Muggsy Bowles, Sam Cassells, um, Reggie Lewis. Um, the list goes on and on, like, you know, for him and who he um, had an impact on from our city. So you grew up around ball, right? But did he, was he training you directly or did you learn indirectly just from being around it? Um, the funny thing is I couldn't train with my dad because we clashed. Yeah. I was trying to show him what I can do. He was trying to teach me the game. So he, what I loved about what he did was he recognized it early. And he said, you know what? I'm going to give you to my, my friend, which was Bucky Lee, which was my coach. And that's how my love just grew so much more for the game. So he kind of realized, like, you know what? I see where this is going to go at between me and him. 
I'm gonna step out and just look from the outside looking in and get let Bucky do whatever he had to do. And when did your pops give you that stamp? Like, all right, you tough now. Um, I, you, it, 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 I don't really recall when he gave me that. I heard it through his friends. You know, like that's how I usually go. Bro. Yeah, you know, like you know, like it was never a moment where we had like, like yeah, like I, this is what I saw. Or, like you're there now, like you know. Um, when when I recognized it, I was 26, 27, and that's the only that was the first time that we played one on one. So he was 55 ish, and I still had all the build up inside me to play, but. When, when I can say I got that approval, honestly, senior night at St. John's, he came to the game and just like, you know, I had 44 points. That was the last game he ever seen me play. That was against Rutgers? Rutgers. Yeah, against Rutgers. That was the last game he ever seen me play. 